Hi Callum, thanks for your footage and good to start working with you on in regards to your golf swing and the system. So first of all, ignore the lines that I've put on. I've just put them on up ahead of time so that we can focus on the right areas at the right point throughout the lesson. So moving swiftly on to the changes that you need to consider when working on your game during this lockdown period. You mentioned in your text that you're that you were surprised how much movement off the ball you still had, despite feeling like the weight was working sort of almost obviously on the lead leg at setup and then staying there throughout the backswing. So the first thing I want you to pay attention to is the lead knee. So with yourself and Grant, there's a green dot on the lead knee at P1. The blue dot is where the lead knee goes to P1 to P4. So in your case, the lead knee is being brought inwards by the turning of the hips or the pelvis. So as the the pelvis turns, the right leg straightening, and the left knee should be flexing. So the trajectory of the lead knee is inwards more than it is downwards in your case. And that's the sort of move that's pushing you off the golf ball. And also when viewed from down the line with a longer club, you perhaps see yourself lift ever so slightly as well. If we look at what Grant does on the right hand side, his lead knee, beg your pardon, just work that one back. His lead knee trajectory is going to work down more towards the golf ball and in less. Which is what's going to add some tilt to the turn and keep the centre of the shoulder turn stable throughout the backswing. Your movement off it isn't that much, but there is still a little bit there. Um, the if you're going to turn in a tilted angle or turn on a tilted angle in a centered manner then you must change flex in the spine change flex in the knees consistently throughout the backswing which is adding some tilt to the turn so you've got to extend rotate and side bend much of that side bend comes from the lead knee trajectory in the backswing so if we exaggerated this your lead knee is moving this way throughout the backswing and Grant's, whilst it doesn't move much because of his range of motion, that will vary from player to player, his is moving more in this direction throughout his backswing. So you need to feel that the lead knee works more towards the golf ball and less in behind the golf ball. So the way I want you to work on that is I want you to actually practice swinging to P4, adding as much flex to that knee towards the ball as you can now when you're doing that and exaggerating that you don't need to hit balls whilst doing that although it does fit nicely into the main part of the swing that i want you to focus on and that's the lead shoulder trajectory in transition from four to six in particular but then through that throughout the swing all the way up to sort of p8 p9 so there are the other lines and dots that are on the screen for you so when you're working on flexing this knee forward throughout the backswing you may feel that the head works down slightly which if you're doing it as a dry run so to speak and you're not hitting the ball that's fine that's a very appropriate feel uh, and way of practicing for you because it's the opposite end of the spectrum so side bend on the way back is created primarily by the lead knee changing flex towards the golf ball. There's no issue with it coming in, but to sort of to try and frame this for you, if it works in an inch, it should work down an inch. If it works in another inch, it should work down another inch. So the more the player needs to rotate the pelvis to achieve the shoulder turn that he desires, the more that lead knee will work in behind the ball but should also work down towards the ball hopefully you can visualize that if you're struggling with that one i can send you a little video across on whatsapp that should clarify it for you pretty quickly get rid of those lines for you now and we're going to move on to the transition so the red dots that you see here now are the trajectory the lead shoulder takes throughout the downswing and you can see that the shape of your lead shoulder trajectory is very different to the shape of Grant's lead shoulder trajectory. Your lead shoulder starts to work, I'm just going to run this through slowly for you, up 
straight away from four to five, 5.5. 5. By the time you get to P6, you can see the yellow dot to the left, uh, sorry, to the right of the red dots. That's where the lead shoulder was at P1. So your lead shoulder is working up very quickly and is always back off its original point in the swing. Now the lead shoulder is really important because that's the center of the arc. And to become more predictable in regards to your overall shot pattern, you need to control where you're hitting the ball in relation to the center of the arc, because that's going to affect your swing path, your swing direction, your angle of attack, your rate of closure. So your lead shoulder is much very sort of up straight away. You can see where the red dots and how they relate to the horizontal white line that I've put on. Particularly 4 to 5.5, lead shoulder works up and back very early in the piece. What we see here with Grant is a lead shoulder that works sort of more level, almost like a little bit down. That's that crushing the can idea, which is in the stack and tilt book. Or pouncing cat is another way of, of sort of describing that. We can see that lead knee, the players pushing into the ground with the legs, with the lower body, particularly in regards to the lead knee and the lead shoulders working levels to down and across so that by the time we get to 5.5, his lead shoulder is lower than and out in front of where it was at P1. Your lead shoulder is behind where it was at P1, and it's also starting to get as high, and then it's going to go higher still. So if we run this swing through now a little bit further, we're going to see that your lead shoulder starts to back up very quickly. You can see the head translating back. And then as we go back, you can see by the time you get to P8, shaft parallel with the ground, look how far behind the ball the lead shoulder is. Look how far behind its original point the lead shoulder is. In Grant's case, it's a more steady raising whilst turning. So by the time he gets to P8, his lead shoulder is still pretty much slightly ahead of, if not in line with, the golf ball. So there's too much raising of the lead shoulder early in the swing. Now we could look at the position we're in there now and you know wax lyrical about different positions in the swing and how they might impact on the overall look, but it starts four to five. So some good drills for you and so oh, the main drill that I want you to work on is I want you to swing to P4 and stop. And then I want you to go to P5, feeling that the left shoulder works level and across. Now the way you're going to regulate that so that you don't get too much into your left side is if you're, and this is, you can kill two birds with one stone here, swing to P4 and stop and make sure that you are flexing your lead knee towards the golf ball. Hold it there for three, four seconds or so, and then slowly go left and work that lead shoulder level four to five. And you're feeling like the weight is going to increase from 60% into your lead side to 80% into your lead side. So swing to four and stop. Five, keeping the shoulder level to the ground. Then do that again. Then do that again. And then on the fourth one, you're going to hit the shot. So what we've got to do here is re-educate our lead shoulder in regards to the trajectory it needs to take during the transition. So four to five, working the lead shoulder level, back to four, 
down to five again, working the lead shoulder level. Do that three times. And then on the fourth swing, you're going to just swing down and hit the ball. And what we should start to see is a very different shoulder trajectory throughout the rest of the swing. Now, there will be some other parts that you need to let the dust settle on, things like the wrist action um, and the amount of hip slide you're creating. However, the catalyst is that lead shoulder from four to five. So yours is four to five, yours works up. As the lead shoulder goes up too quick, the head drops back too quick. As the head drops back too quick, the lead shoulder is working down too fast, which means that the hand path will be projected out to the right. The low point will be very difficult to control. And the rate of closure on the club face is going to be too high. You are also putting a tremendous amount of strain on the lower part of your back when doing this. So you want to pay attention to that. Maybe you've had a few twinges. Uh, that's not for me to say, but you're certainly at risk of damaging the lower back with the lead shoulder working in that manner. And having a lead shoulder which is working up and back of the lowest point of the arc. So that's the sort of lowest point of your arc. You're making hitting the ball before the lowest point of the arc very, very difficult. And the amount of timing that that requires is massive, which explains a lot of your inconsistencies. So as you're practicing the drills and the fields that I've just gone over with you there, and you want to send me a little bit of footage of you doing the drills, just to make sure that you're doing them correctly, feel free to do so. You've got my number, you can send it across on WhatsApp. And if you've got any questions relating to the information in this video, again, feel free to drop me a line. Looking forward to watching this one progress. Well done and thanks.